We got the exclusive, 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 Stacy. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Stacy Robertson. Good evening, good evening, listeners and viewers. I'm Stacy Robertson, your host with the most exclusive and one of Atlanta's greatest ideas. And if you're listening, please, it is important that you share the WSTU radio link to your social medias by encouraging followers to download the WSTU radio tune-in app and then to also search by searching in WSTU radio and listening to our show. Now, most importantly, I just got to have you all to, to subscribe. So in a few weeks, um, very, very soon, you'll be able to also um, subscribe to our YouTube as well as our podcast, all right? But most importantly, as I said already, you got to make sure you subscribe. Now, we are the exclusive nighttime radio, YouTube, and podcast talk show of Atlanta. It, Hey, we got a dynamite show ahead of us, and so I'm not going to let this moment go by without shouting out the hottest DJ in college radio. You know him as DJ Crisis. DJ yes, Crisis, sir. where you at? Yes, sir. Take us out. All right. We have none other in the studio with us, Drake Giant, the R&B Bully, who was an original member of R. Kelly and the public announcement. Party crew, let's make some more noise for our guest. <laughs> now, understand that the public announcement, the group rose to fame after releasing their platinum-selling album entitled Born Into the 90s, critically naming them one of the hottest and successful R&B groups of their era. The group included Dre Borkins, Ricky Webster, and Earl Robinson. Now, you couldn't say R&B without saying the public announcement, producing receipts for top singles such as Give Me That Honey Love. Anybody know about that? Okay. Honey Love, Hey okay. Mr. DJ, and of course, hey. She Got That Fire. Fire. I don't hear nobody. Y'all don't know that. <laughs> hey, where you at? What's good? What's good? <laughs> all right. First of all, Thank you for being a part of our show. No, thank you for having me, man. I'm happy to be here. And, Dre, we go way back, right? Absolutely. Years, <laughs> years. We go back a few years. My Ex space years. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, you are definitely what we call friends of the show, so I'm just happy that you are a part of this show. And we're just going to have a lot of fun and just going to give out some information because at the end of the day, we want to know the exclusive on what's yeah. happening with you because I know a lot is going on, but also we're going to talk about a lot of what's also, it's the trending topic on today, Absolutely. which is R. Kelly, all right? Absolutely. And so, and, and I really feel that, hey, can, who can talk about him the most? It's someone who is really, really, who was really close to him, all right? Right. right. So, we're just going to get started and we're going to hit the ground running. So, R. Kelly had just won superstar Natalie Cole's TV show entitled Big Break. Uh, and there was a group called MGM. He won $100,000, multiple prizes, and gotten a major recording deal as a result. Number one, I'm gonna ask you two questions. Number one, where are all where were you all the group MGM? Absolute, and if not, what absolutely happened to them? Not. And number two, how did you all public announcement get linked with R. Kelly? Okay, we weren't a part of MGM. That was a whole separate group. That was the group he had when he went on Natalie Cole's big break and won that money. So we had nothing to do with that. Okay. Um, but we met him because we were doing talent shows all across Chicago. And we were winning and winning and winning until it got to the point where, you know, they wouldn't let us get into talent shows no more. So at that point, we were like special guests, stuff like that. So at that point, we decided to go to the Cotton Club. Mm -hmm. Cotton Club was a real popular spot. Bernie Mac, Godfrey, all these different people were down there and doing their thing. And Kales would frequent that place too. And he wasn't really on yet, but he mm -hmm. was starting to bubble. You know what I'm saying? So so we went down there. We were dressed, ready to go. The list was so long, so we was at, like, the bottom of the list. So we didn't even get a chance to perform. But he seen us dressed, and he was like, hey, y'all seen you dance? And we was like, yeah, yeah, we do all that. And he's like, come in the bathroom, you know what I'm saying, you know, and, you know, let me hear y'all. You know okay, so let me stop you right there. 
Um, and because I know that'll bleed into the next question, what I want to ask you. Now, you guys did a recent interview with Vlad TV, correct? Absolutely. Now, in the video, you guys were asked, how did you all get with R. Kelly as well? Mm -hmm. However, there was some controversy surrounding you guys' comments about your audition in the, in the bathroom with R. Kelly. Right. I want to give you this opportunity to clear this matter up if it was even a matter to begin with, all right? Right. Well, it wasn't a matter to me. I mean, people are like crazy. People yeah. in the comments, I don't even pay no attention to that. <laughs> so at the end of the day, they they took it the wrong way when we said we was in the bathroom and a lot of crazy stuff happened right. in there. But no, it was it was pee all over the floor. <laughs> I mean, we dancing and singing in pee. <laughs> I mean, so that's what everything that was going on in there, basically. Right. So we danced and sung, and then he said, meet, meet me at Presidential Towers tomorrow, we're all black. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we were at a point where we could go no further, so actually meeting him, and he was a little bit ahead, we was like, okay, well, let, let's just do it. So we went, rehearsed to music, did routines, and I promise you, it wasn't but like maybe three weeks after that, we was doing a photo shoot, and the next thing you knew, we was overseas doing sold out shows. It was just, just that quick. Okay, all right. So fast forward, you all are traveling around the world, as we stated. Um, you're with R. Kelly. All right, y'all doing concerts, TV appearances, award shows, the whole nine yards. Right. This is the question that everybody, I'm sure, they want to know. Did you all witness R. Kelly messing with underage girls? Never. But what I will tell you. There was a lot of girls always around, like I said on Vlad. I mean, but never did I witness him with no young girls. You know what I'm saying? But did I witness him with with adults? Yeah, yeah, I probably witnessed that. Okay, all right. So, were you all around when Aaliyah was working on her first album with R. Kelly? I I was there briefly. Okay, so you know what I'm saying. So I did see her come and go and she working on a project but but like I said before it's like you know we couldn't really talk to her because he he run a he ran like a real tight ship so at the end of the day you can't speak to whoever his guests are mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying because they were considered his guests okay so his guests you didn't speak to him you didn't say nothing to him so you know, yeah I seen her but that was pretty much that so you didn't see anything strange with their relationship not at all not not at all so, but it was confirmed later that they were married. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So, let me ask you this. Considering that we knew her age, after if it would reveal how old she really was, why do you think that her parents didn't press charges? You want the truth? Yeah. yeah. We want the exclusive. exclusive. <laughs> we want the exclusive. <laughs> Come on. Right. Right. I mean, because I'm considering, I mean, are you, let me ask you this, are you a parent? Absolutely. Okay, so, do you have daughters? Yeah. Or? Okay, so you are a parent who has a daughter. So so when you putting yourself in this type of situation and understanding as a parent what you would do if this was your daughter. So now I want to restate that question. Why do you think her parents did not press charges? Well, well, I actually know in in my opinion why they didn't press charges. Okay. First of all, Barry Hankerson was managing Kales and that was his niece. Mm -hmm. So he brung her in and of course the family is connected of course right mm -hmm. so once that happened they had put so much into him wanting to produce her and make her a hit they weren't going to at that point say okay well we're going to press charges it's not morally right but I mean at, at the end of the day today mm -hmm. They own majority of his publishing. Wow. So why mm. did that happen? Mm. So you got to ask yourself, why would they press charges and they get majority of his publishing? Right. All of it, basically. Right, right. So no. that was their payoff. Mm -hmm. I mean, does yeah. it sound right to you? I mean, I, I hear you. Okay. All right. Fast forward, 2003. Kelly was charged with multiple counts of child pornography and sexual abuse with underage girls. He was acquitted of all charges. People were saying that the parents and the girl in the video was allegedly paid to state that it was not her in the video. One star witness who took the heat was recording artist Sparkle, who is the aunt of the young lady who she believes is her niece in the video. Question, did you know Sparkle? 
Absolutely. All right. So, Vlad, Vlad.com was able to surface a docu-trailer that was released over two years ago about public announcement. <coughs> I want to go on record and state that this trailer came out before the Surviving R. Kelly docu-series, correct? Absolutely. All right. Is it true that the group member Earl Robinson was married to Sparkle? Absolutely. Also in the trailer, your group member Earl Robinson said that he believed that his wife Sparkle was messing around with R. Kelly. Is this what he believed? And how did Sparkle get in front of R. Kelly? And we got one minute to wrap up this. Oh, wow. Okay, well, <coughs> um, me and Earl was producing Sparkle and doing records on her. Mm -hmm. And we had done like a demo. And Earl asked me, he said, hey, man, because he was gone at that point because he, he left because he said he saw uh, Kales and Leah. So at that point, I said, it's not a good idea, Earl. And he was pretty much like, no, 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 I'm married to her, so it's good. Just please take it. So I took it down there. He listened to it. He said, oh, it's hot, but I got to do it by myself. You know, I can't do this with anyone else. You know what I'm saying? And if she's going to do it, you know, she pretty much, you know, if I do her album, she got to sleep on this couch. So at that point, some time went by, and then he asked me, he said, hey, I'm working on Aaliyah stuff. Could you call Steph Sparkle? And, and have her come down, you know what I'm saying, and do some vocals. And I was like, yeah. So that's that's how she got there. Wow, wow. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pause for the calls. we got to pay some bills around here. Okay. So we're going to let DJ Crisis do his thing. Party crew, if you're enjoying yourself and you're enjoying the interview, make some noise. <laughs> oh, so, uh, we're going to get straight back to um, straight to business. And we're going to actually, hopefully, I think we're going to have a special call-in guest who's going to call in any second as well. And I'm going to tell you all who he is if he gets to call in, all right? But we're going to fast forward. We're going, it's 2019. And, and actually, before we do that, I do want to bring a close on something. How did you all, briefly, how did public announcement end as it relates to your relationship with R. Kelly? How did that end? I mean, it, you know, it got to the point where he was about to do the 12 play album and Earl was Earl was pretty much on the way out. <clears throat> and once Earl left, Rick eventually left and then it just left me. And, and I stayed for a while and then I eventually left after that. Okay, wow. So when you look at the fact that, um, if I'm correct, if I know the story correct, you were with R. Kelly the longest. Yeah. All right, and so... Can you can you talk about your relationship um, when you all were together as far as being good friends? Um, you know, during the timing of you being with him. I mean, I think you know if if I would have to say my my opinion, he, he you know it was a certain vibe that I, I brought to the situation. Mm -hmm. You know that you know that kind of made everything like you know I don't want to say this people are gonna be mad but. It kind of made him look cool, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, to have me there, you know, I'm from the west side of Chicago, and right. I just had a different vibe than him, you know what I'm saying, and and I was studying, mm -hmm. I wasn't really there like nobody else just to be there, mm -hmm. so I was always studying and watching and watching him record and just and watching him write and really just getting my game up at the same time. Right, right, so, gotcha. So our relationship was like that. So I was never carrying bags or doing no crazy stuff everybody else was doing. I never was doing none of that. You okay, I mean? cool, cool. So fast forward 2019. R. Kelly was recently arrested for new charges of sexual abuse of minors. And this that occurred in a VHS tape allegedly showing the singer performing and receiving sexual acts. According to the media... He could face up to 70 years. Right. Considering that once upon a time, you all, Robert Kelly, were friends, how does this make you feel? And before we're going to do now, we have a special calling guest. We have with us Ricky Repster, who is an, also an original member of R. Kelly and the public announcement. We're going to get Ricky on the call. Ricky, can you hear me? Hey, Rick, can you hear me? Okay, we got to disconnect. Okay. All right, so maybe he'll call back. But we're going to go ahead and keep forward. So tell me this. Um, 
So considering that you are a once upon a friend, once upon a friend, um, mm -hmm. you are with friends. How does this make you feel knowing that he could face up seventy years? I mean, I'm I'm saddened by it, but if those things were done to those young people, then then it is what it is. I mean, it has to be what it's going to be. So. So. No, you think that. We're going to try this again. I think he, we got him calling in. Hey, Rick, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. All right. So we have on the show with us, we have Rick Webster, who is also an original member of R. Kelly and the Public Announcement. Um, party crew, let's make some noise for our calling guest. <laughs> so we now have not one, but two members. All right. And so, Rick, welcome to the show. All right. Now, listen real quick. Um, I asked Dre this question. I'm going to ask you the same question. I uh, said so we fast forward to 2019. Uh, we know that R. Kelly has been charged um, for multiple counts of sexual abuse of minors uh, that occurred in a VHS tape, allegedly showing that he performed him and he was performing and receiving sexual acts with minors. All right. So according to the media, he could face up to 70 years. Considering that you all were once upon a time friends. How does this make you feel briefly? I am um, hurt. There's a lot of people pointing their fingers and having been so close, I have no idea whether it's true or not, but either way those have heard about the allegations, have heard about the people that are, you know, that have been hurt that are saying that they are hurt. So to me it's uh it's, it's, it's real, it's real serious, and, uh, you know, I just wish we could sit down and talk and pray. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. So, real quick, this is another question. Why do you think people did not help him with this alleged problem? And both of y'all can answer this. Why do y'all think people did not help him? Didn't help him with what? Considering that people knew that he had a problem. All right. Well, first of all, you can't help a person who's manipulating his whole situation. Mm. How do you help him? Right. You can't really tell him nothing. And that's the problem. And that's the problem. And that's the problem. You know, um, consider it, this is a sad situation. <laughs> and I really, really do believe, and, and, and I'm saying this to all fans of R. Kelly, you know, and just people in general, you know, when we know and when we feel and believe that someone has a problem, you know, I just think that we need to go the extra mile to find the way. Because I think because people did not come forward in the manner in which they should have, we're in, the, we're in this space and place now, you know. Um, but I, I, if, if, I definitely say to anyone that's close to R. Kelly, you know, definitely um, we know that he needs to get help. I mean, you got to understand the people that's around are people that are trying to move forward with their own agenda. So they don't really care. Mm -hmm. So they're not saying anything. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think between me and Rick and, and the people that are not there now, to a certain degree, we've all, like, did a side eye, right. but don't really know what's going on for real because you never seen nothing. So how can you even come to him and say, hey, dude, you need help? Mm -hmm. I didn't see nothing to tell him he need help. Right, exactly. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But but the people that know, uh, quote, unquote, his enablers, like Avenetti be saying, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Right. They know. Exactly. Those are the people that people should be chasing down to figure out why did they let it happen. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree. I agree. We only got a couple of minutes left, all right, before we have to wrap up this wrap segment. Up. Man, we're having so much fun. So, real quick, will there be, with the original members, will there be a, a reunion album or some type of reunion tour coming forward in the future? Can y'all let us know anything about that? If, that's, if you want to start possible? this out and then, you know, Rick? Yeah, I'll start it out. I'll, I'll start that and I will, uh, and I'm going to hand it to you. No, you ain't. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> so it'll be no reunion. It's just me and Rick. Okay. Gotcha. Ricky Rich. And okay. 
the new situation will be called Too Legendary. Too Legendary. All right. Absolutely. And the first single will be called Million Ones. Okay. All right. 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 So, real quick. So, we... We couldn't hear you, but that's okay, Rick. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> what we got to do, we're going to have to wrap up to prepare to wrap up this segment. But what I want to do is, can y'all just tell us briefly what you got going on today? And also, how can people contact you? Okay, right, Rick. We appreciate right. that. Uh, Instagram, Giant, the R&B Bully. And it's spelled exactly how it, how it sounds. Giant, R-N-B, Bully. On Twitter, it's hits with a Z, digital E N T. Um, and actually, I'm looking for people that want to work in media because I'm starting my radio show, Hits Digital Radio Podcast. All right. Ooh. So whoever wants to be involved with that is totally on. Just just holler at me, and you can DM me. Um, and I have a film company. And if you go, uh, if you hit me on IG, I'll send you to the YouTube, and then I'll send you to uh, the media page. And now I'm getting lost because so much going on in here. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, yeah, million ones coming soon. But yeah, hit me up on IG, DM me, you know. We need people to work at the film company, at the record label. Artists, hit me up. If you want to work, hit me up. It's all good. Let's get down. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Rick. What's up, man? Thank you, Dre, for being a part of the show. And we're definitely looking forward to um, thank you, all the great things that you got coming forward as it relates to you guys. All right. So we're going to take a quick uh, break. So, DJ Crisis, I'm going to let you do your thing. And again, you're listening to the exclusive on WSTU Radio. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. At this time, la ladies and gentlemen, listeners, I have with you, live here in the studio, my boy, Dr. Rashad Ritchie. Let's make some noise for Dr. Rashad Ritchie. <laughs> Professor at Beulah Heights University. He's an on-air talk radio personality, news and talk with 1380 WAOK and B103. He is a blogger, a political commentator. He's nationally syndicated on Empowerment Radio Network. As I said, he's a political analyst, TV commentator, and he is the editor-in-chief staff writer as well for Rolling Out Magazine. So party crew, if you don't mind making a party noise for me, let's make some noise for none other again. Our guest, Dr. Rashad Ritchie. Yeah. I don't have a party crew. I never, years, I never had a party crew. It's your first damn day and you got a party crew. Come on, man. Look, Completely unfair. <laughs> Look, that's how we got to make this thing work, right? But we're going to jump right in because, again, we got six minutes to change the world. In, and trust me, the world is um, they're listening, all right? Yeah. So let's talk Donald Trump, all right? Let's not. <laughs> Go ahead. And I was going to say people know him as president, all right? So President Donald Trump. Could he get impeached based on recent allegations and testimonies of Michael Cohen? He could get he could get impeached based on stuff way before that. The issue of impeachment is not really a matter of criminal indictment. That is the congressional and Senate version mm -hmm. of criminal indictment. However, criminal prerequisite is not really needed for impeachment. It is a political process, and impeachment does not equate to removal. Mm -hmm. Remember. Clinton got impeached. He did not get removed. Mm. They started the conversations and articles of impeachment against Nixon. Nixon had to resign. He did not get removed. We have never in the history of this country actually removed a U.S. president. And impeachment is simply a process that creates a prerequisite for potential removal, but we always uh, tend not to do that part, even if we impeach a standing president. So... Were there some things that were technically criminal? Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. If we utilize intellectual integrity and apply criminality the same as it related to Bill Clinton, as it related to Nixon, as it related to other presidents, yes, he has done that, that technically violate the rule of law and technically violate the U.S. Constitution. He, he violated the Emoluments Clause. He violated the Establishment Clause. Mm -hmm. So there's some there there. 
But the question is, does Congress have the political will in order to enact articles of impeachment? And the short answer, and I'm talking to Democrats and Republicans, no. Wow. So considering everything that has taken place across the country, when we look at this man that's been president, mm -hmm. and we have watched him uh, make fun, um, we have watched this man talk about people of all races, you know, when we speak about African Americans, we have watched him um, talk about women, and just, I mean, why would you think that, do you think people will give him another opportunity to serve in the next four years? Do you think that that's are we going to go in that direction? Well, many people will still give him that opportunity. He will face a primary challenge, probably multiple primary challengers mm -hmm. in the Republican primary. Uh, he will win the Republican primary by a landslide. Now, the question is, what happens in a general election? He has proven that you do not have to be a coalition builder in order to be president of the United States. He has figured out that his base mm -hmm. creates room for him to be exactly who he wants to be. The latest scientific poll that was done says, hey, four out of ten Americans, generally Americans, general, they're still saying, we're going to vote for this guy mm -hmm. moving forward. Now, he's taking credit for some things that really is not his fault. He's taking credit for the economy. Well, the fundamentals of the economy started to improve under Barack Obama. He has actually slowed down some of those fundamentals, but he has not blown it yet. Mm -hmm. So even though he has a lot of rhetoric and he talks a lot, he has created a level of destabilization in the market, but he has not completely wrecked it, but he takes credit for the current economy. Now, a lot of people attribute it to him. So why do you see his numbers still strong amongst Hispanics and others? Mm -hmm. Well, they feel as if people are working and folks are getting paid. When he said there's a tax break that will be the biggest in the history of America, I said on radio and television that day, it is not a tax break, it is a tax shift. Mm -hmm. Unless you are fundamentally shrinking government, you will never actually get a tax break. You will only get a tax shift. Now, you've had people who are getting their tax returns and they're getting less money. Mm -hmm. Here's the stat. Eight, I, at average American, 8 to 10 percent, they're getting less money by 8 to 10 percent than what they would have gotten the year before, the year before that. So what happened? The taxes simply shifted. And now they're feeling the effects of that shift. You actually had a really depressed... Christmas season as far as shopping. The biggest indicator that the economy is doing really, really great is people spending money. When folks were not spending money at a record level during Christmas, but they were supposed to get this record tax break, that should have told you then there's something in the mix that's not right. Okay. So we'll have, if you can give me 30 seconds. I'll try. <laughs> Kamala Harris, member of the House of Representatives, has announced her bid in the next election for U.S. President. What are your thoughts about her bid? Does she have a chance? She does have a chance. Let me tell you why. There's a trend mm -hmm. in our national politics. Here's the trend. It's called extremes. Mm -hmm. George W. Bush, older white male who embarrassed us a lot throughout this world, uh, played a large part in creating the atmosphere to have a young black male get elected named Barack Obama. Barack Obama gets elected a sensible African-American male, good-looking guy, very diplomatic, created the atmosphere for the extreme, a Donald Trump to be president of, of the United States. What is the extreme to a Donald Trump presidency? A Senator Kamala Harris. Mm. Hey, with that being said, I don't think there's nothing else to say. All right. <laughs> Thank you, man. Uh, now, of course, the last section that we have with Dr. Rashad Richie, that's called political pillow talk. This next section is called education conversation. So we got in the studio with us R&B singer, actor Jarvis Shaker. You know him best from his hit singles, Radio, Pretty Girl, and Make a Little Room. He was first signed to super producer, CEO Jermaine Dupree, and later signed to superstar rapper and actor Ludacris. All right? And you may even saw him in his appearance in the Tyler Perry movie, Alimony. All right? So we got none other than Jarvis in the building. Make some noise. Oh! Jarvis, how are you feeling tonight? Thank you. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, thank you for being a part of the show. Um, definitely, we go back. A way, way yeah. back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A long time. <laughs> and so, definitely been a good friend of mine. So I thank you for being a part of the show. And Absolutely. like I so said, we're just going to do what we do, just conversate, all right? Yeah, but we're yeah, going to talk sure. education. And so, we're going to jump right in this bad boy. Now, I want to focus on, we just got out of um, Black History Month. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. 
and party crew, y'all listen to it when I say this. We just got out of Black History Month, and when we think about the Negro National Anthem, lift every voice and sing. I'm going to be honest with you, through the whole month, I can't recall one time I heard a song on television, by hearing the song, hearing on the radio, or at any event that I've been at. Can y'all, what about y'all? Have y'all heard it? I heard it. And so, I, exactly. So, did y'all go to church? Anybody go to church? <laughs> did he I not? Did, did he, he not? Call us out, they did he not call us out? It wasn't that church. That's either. the only place I hear it. <laughs> That's the only place. That's the point I'm making. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love it. But I'm going to be honest, I haven't heard it, you know. And so I'm going to ask, so I want to focus on that just for a little bit. You being a national recording artist, I can imagine the different places that you have sung across the country. But have you ever sung the Negro National Anthem at any games or special events? No. Never, none? Never, never. In your career, none? No never one's once. never invited you to come and sing that? No. No, I've, right. been, I've been invited out multiple times to sing the national anthem. Like where? Um, uh, I sang it at a Clippers game in L.A. Um, I did it at a, an event uh, in Charlotte, uh, two events in Charlotte, actually, uh, a Bobcats game. Um, and another, I think it was like uh, it was like a basketball, mm -hmm. college basketball conference or something. Um, a few times, yeah, yeah, but never the, never the Negro national anthem never was requested so that's a problem and i'm just gonna go ahead and call that out that is a yeah. problem so why do you think that in 2019 the negro national anthem by the way we're gonna shout out clark atlanta because yeah. the national anthem was actually written by an alum of atlanta university by the name of james welton johnson that's it so when we speak about the negro national anthem you're talking about cau all day all right yeah, okay. but the Negro National Anthem, why do you think it's not being widely taught in the K-12 setting? Uh, I mean, I, I think it's just like anything else, you know what I mean? I think that is a there's an agenda, you know what I mean? Um, I think uh, somewhat, you know, we got to take it up on ourselves as a community to, you know, put that on our kids because, mm -hmm. I mean... It, you know, when I came up, we had to say the national anthem. Right. You know what I'm saying? We had to. Like, we had to put our hand on our heart. Like, now, I mean, even now, like, um, there's discrepancies between schools now on whether they're saying the national anthem, mm -hmm. or, you know, and Pledge of Allegiance, all that, today. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's, you know, we're living in a different time now where, you know, a lot of people's opinions and they hashtags and their groups start getting into you know mm -hmm. our, our values and they just change everything so i think it's it's a responsibility that we ought to take on ourselves as a community to step up and say hey you know what regardless of what you're learning at school or regardless of what you're learning over here or when you go over there you know this is our culture and you know you need to know this no matter what so i, th I think it's just a responsibility that needs to be taken okay i appreciate you sharing that um i'm gonna get off a little bit because we're still in education been in college Shout out to Bennett College, HBC. Bennett <laughs> College recently host, uh, they recently lost, and but temporarily restored their accreditation according to Black America Web and other sources. How important do you think HBCUs are to the country? Ah, oh, man. I mean, they're vital. You know, I mean, when you, when you really, you got to take it back. For me, when I think about it, you got to take it back to like, why, like, what was the reason for an HBCU? BCU like from day one mm -hmm. and when you think about that the reason was segregation mm -hmm. you know what I mean like we weren't allowed to go to school we weren't allowed to to learn and have a degree you know what I mean so that was the, the reason in the beginning to for us to start our own institutions and become accredited and, and, and you know uh, educated and mm -hmm. all those things so it's like you know you, you fast forward it to now you know I think it's like it's just as important as it was then it is now because I mean you got to think about it they trying to erase us from history man I mean oh, they, yeah. they've done that from day one you mm -hmm. know what I mean I mean you look at the current establishment in, in our White House you know every move every time you turn around Trump is undoing something that Obama put in place mm -hmm. I mean um, you know kids today things are things are are are, are better mm -hmm. you know per se so a lot of times you know, they don't even feel like they see racism because mm -hmm. a lot of times it's done very subtle. 
You know, it's, it's even though it's done in, in your face and plain sight, when you a child, sometimes if it's not as blatant mm -hmm. um, as it once was, you like, oh, we good. Like, what, what, is, what does that have to do with anything? You know what I mean? So I think that it's just one of those situations where, like, more education, you know, exactly. more more education. I mean, you go to these schools and, you know, you, they're not teaching you, uh, you know, about your history. They're not mm -hmm. teaching you about the things that you need to know from where you came from. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's just the point of it all. You know what I'm saying? So uh, very vital, man. Very vital, just as important as, you know, when they started these things and during segregation, it's just as important today, in my opinion. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Um, and I totally agree with y'all. We got to show mad love to our HBCUs. We got to support. So make sure um, parents, African-American community, please, let's make sure that, that our kids are going to HBCU. That's the only way they're going to stay alive, all right? So real quick, I'm going to open up just for, um, we got time for maybe one question. Anybody have a question that they would like to ask Jarvis? Um, in relation to the topic of what we're speaking about as far as HBCUs. All right. So, hey, Jarvis, I thank you so much for spending this time with us. Um, definitely, you're friends of the show. Love to have you in the future again um, where we can spend more and more time with you. So, I know you're going to stay around with us just for a little bit for the, um, for the meet and greet, correct? For sure. Yeah, okay, yeah. awesome, awesome. So, we're going to have a quick, uh, quick break. DJ Crisis, take us out again. You're listening to the exclusive on WSTU Radio. We got the exclusive, 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 exclusive.